Hi, I'm Jamie. I go fishing and diving in this small boat. So I'm going to show you this boat and I'm going to give you some advice on how to organize the boat. I'll show you what I did. So if you've got a small boat, this might be helpful for you. Firstly, I'm going to show you some of the security. I've been the victim of crime before, so I'm a little bit paranoid. I don't really trust people. So I'm going to show you how I secure this trailer. It's a little bit overboard, but here it is. Tow ball lock here. Padlock here to secure the safety chain. Down there, there's a cheap wheel clamp. And there's a padlock, and there's a square link security chain. I'll show you from the other side. There it is. It's padlock to a tree. Here's the outboard motor. That's another square link security chain with a disc padlock and that runs through the grab handle of the outboard motor. And down here this is the main one. This is the SAS wheel clamp. Solid steel. Difficult to get through. Now as anyone will tell you who's made videos about security of trailers, boat trailers, caravan trailers, any thief who wants to get your stuff they'll get it if they're determined enough and they've got the right tools. The idea is to put enough security on the trailer so that any potential robber is going to look at it and they're going to think, oh, too difficult, too hard. The name of the boat is the Raptor because an Osprey is actually a Raptor, also known as the Sea Eagle or Sea Hawk. It's the Osprey 400 Raptor. Okay, now let's have a look at the inside of the boat. There's a lot to show you. This is where the driver sits. This is a swivel seat. I found when I started using this boat that this particular side handle here is not quite far enough for me, so I installed a second grab handle here. Now let's have a look inside these gunnels. Now the gunnel storage in this boat, it's not very big. The top is only about 60 millimeters across, the depth at the bottom is about 90 millimeters across, the overall height around about 110 millimeters. Not a lot of space in there, it's just the way they designed this particular type of boat. This is an Osprey. In these little containers here, I got these from Bunnings Warehouse. They have these little removable trays. I've actually used double-sided tape to stick these things in so they don't come out. That's my fishing stuff. So there's uh, lures, hooks, sinkers, tackle, etc. I don't take a lot because I don't do a lot of rod fishing, but when I need it, it's there. And this one, we've got my glasses dive watch and seasick pills. Don't forget your seasick pills. Over here, this is a first aid kit. And here, behind this piece of white cloth, that's the uh, 7 amp hour marine battery for the fish finder. So I'll show you the fish finder. So I keep the fish finder underneath the front bench seat here, because I don't want it to be sitting exposed to the harsh sun, you know, all the time. So there's actually a little cargo net underneath. So I pull it out from the cargo net, which can be a little fidgety. Here we go, we've got our fish finder. This is a Lowrance Elite 4 Chirp. It's got a homemade sun visor here. I slot it in to my rail blazer port, and then it can swivel in all directions. So if I have a passenger sitting right there, and the driver sitting right there, they can both see, both use, both access, the fish finder. And when I'm done for the day, I can take it off, put it back under the seat in the little cargo net. But there's more cargo nets on this boat. I'll show you the other ones. Now you might be wondering to yourself, what's the deal with cargo nets? Why are you using cargo nets? Well, I don't know how I come up with the idea, but cargo nets are just a handy thing for having some storage availability but the net because they're made of elastic because they're made of elastic they're just going to collapse in on themselves when, they, when they're not used so here we've got a big float boat this is the Kaiwaka ET float boat on one side on the other side there's the other cargo net it's got nothing in it but you can put anything in there you can put a dry bag in there put uh, you know float with float line just anything that's going to fit in there so how does it attach to the side of the boat well we've got these little plastic cable tie anchor points. They stick on with double-sided tape. Then we just use some cable ties, and we stick it on. 
works quite well actually. Now these particular little cargo nets, I got those off of Timu, and they're actually designed for motorcycle helmets, so that you can put a motorcycle helmet on the back of a motorcycle. All I had to do was just take off the little pre-existing metal hooks and use cable ties. So these are the two cargo nets up the front of the boat. There's another one down the back. This one at the back of the boat is a little bit harder to see just due to the fact that we've got a seat here and we've got our swivel seat here. But underneath here, we have another black cargo net. This one goes all the way across the back of the transom. So it uses those same attachment points and attach down the front here, underneath the seat here. So what do you put down the back here? Well, the thing that you put down the back is your dive gear. You put your fins, gloves, booties, mask, snorkel, sometimes floats and float lines. Anything that you don't mind getting wet, because the back of the boat tends to be where you get a wee bit of water come in, it just sits there at the back of the boat behind that cargo net. The cargo net, designed for an SUV, actually works really well for a boat. So right down there on the floor, that's a false floor that I've made up. So it's actually some boards with some marine carpet. It's actually a lot more comfortable standing on that than rather than just trying to stand around the bottom of the boat. Behind the driver's seat here, we've actually got an extra rod holder. The boat does come with four rod holders. One, two, three, four. But I put an extra one back here. So those front and rear seats and the floor of the boat have this EVA foam flooring that I got from AliExpress. It's basically the same type of stuff as UDEC, otherwise known as EVA, EVA foam flooring. Now this particular boat, they don't have like kit sets for the boat. So you really just have to think about, well, how do I want to, how do I want to use this stuff? So what we've got is the EVA foam flooring on the front seat, on half of the back seat, a little bit on the floor, left and right sides, and in some of the gunnels. But not all of the gunnels have it because we do have some of these containers in there. This one is loose, other ones are stuck in place. That one there is actually velcroed in place. That one has my marine radio in it for emergencies. Okay, so just having a look inside the front gunnels here. We've got our marine radio there as I showed you. We've got a water bottle here, labelled soapy water. And I like this one, I don't think any other divers do this. My shoehorn that assists for putting on and taking off your dive fins. We've got about 30 meters of rope here just for any emergency situations. Should I need to tow another boat or get towed myself. Painter line is attached here, approximately 3.5 meters long. Three water bottles in here for drinking. A spare dive knife on that side and behind all of it, a 600 millimeter dive flag, blue and white dive flag. And of course down here, Got our heavy duty Kuween anchor with about five and a half meters of chain and about 30 meters of anchor rope. I better explain these things. These things are rail blazer ports and these are the versions that are actually mounted on the rail. Now what you do is you flip these caps off and you use these rail blazer G clamps, 50 millimeter G clamps, and they clamp on. What would you want to attach here why would you clamp something on a spear gun of course have a look at this video clip you can see so that's a spear gun mounted you know on here and on the other side of the boat we've got that gun all over there and that's completely empty with the fish sticker fish measuring sticker below it and that's where I would normally store another spear gun. One more little thing, and I'm really proud of this one. This one was a wee bit tricky. I've actually got a lunchbox, an underseat storage here. It's got a little wee tray, and it's a friction fit. And I just pull it out, and ho ho, look, here's a lunchbox. Now it's just got some offcuts of that same flooring, that EVA foam flooring that um, came with the boat that I used on the boat. Uh, it just helps it fit in there. So what kind of things would you keep in this lunchbox? Well, you can get, you can put anything you want in here, but I've got, you know, spare bung, spare shackle, spare GoPro housing, spare rubbers for the spear gun. Of course, you could put anything you want in a lunchbox. You could put in your, your lunch, for example. You know, uh, so that is just a, a good utilization of space. 
and just to put it back in I just slide it back in and there we go friction fit it's back in there so you know it's a bit of an art form utilizing the space on your boat to the best of your ability and once you've got everything laid out it's like huh this thing is a hell of a lot more usable now so I hope the video was helpful this video is just to show you a little bit of what I do so if you've got a small boat like this or similar you might get some ideas just from the little things that I've done to this boat and if you're watching my channel regularly and you're watching these dive videos and fishing videos it's a little bit of a behind the scenes speaking of which I think that you should really check out this video right here this is one of my most best favoritest videos that were produced recently difficult to make expensive costly <laughs> petrol but a good dive trip you should check out that video